All right, so I finished writing. Okay, does this thing, yeah. Hold on a second. Is this thing, there we go. All right, so I finished writing the, the actual exam last night, so I can tell you a couple things about it, about how it differs from the actual examination, right? So first off, first page is very, very similar. Okay, very, they're, they're not the same question, but they are very, but they're in this, they're in a similar vein, right? Second, this page and this stuff over here are condensed into a single page. You have five, you'll have five expression questions as opposed to 10 because, you know, an hour and a half, you've got an hour and 20 minutes and I figure you'd want less questions that way. What? I will, give me a second. Give me one second, fit with. And let me go ahead and make it easier to see because. There we go. That should be much better. All right. So here, this page, rather than having ten questions, you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have five questions. You have a question very similar to this. That that's of the same vein of this one. Here's some variables. I'm gonna do some operations on them. Please tell me what they are after we're done with this. Um, and I'll be going over these all today, by the way. I'm just kind of telling, listing the differences out in, at the beginning. Okay, uh, you'll have three of these questions instead of five of these true-false questions. Um, and then you'll have something similar with, uh, you know, here's, there will be an A, B, C, D. Please give me, uh, give me the strings that result after we slice stuff. Okay. Um, and then the remainder of the questions will be turtles. Uh, there will be two five, so if I'm, I'm, I'm working from memory here, there's gonna be, your first two things on turtles are two five point questions where I tell you first draw the program and then I change the program, give me a, uh, tell me wh what that did. So, so very similar to these things. In fact, I copy pasted this text right over here for that. Um, next, um, and then the order changes, like I'll have, there's going to be one problem where I give you the output. Um, so there's like one where I give you the output and I tell you to uh, complete the code so that you get from, from sorry, there's, sorry, I tell you to fill in the blank so, you, so the output, the appropriate output gets produced. Then there's another one where I have most of the code done, but I have a section that in between comments where you need to fill it in and I've got a figure A and a figure B, and I say figure A is where we're at. Figure B is what we want to be at. So please complete the. Uh, so please complete it. It's not particularly onerous. You just gotta trace the code, figure out. Okay, this is how I am. This is where the turtle is. And now from here, if I do these directions, I'll be fine. Okay. Um, right. Um, but there's very little on the way of actual. There's not too much like where in the where I tell you to write something wholesale, right? Um, there's not something like this because room. There is one problem instead of two problems like this. There will be one problem with like this where I'm passing stuff into a function, and then there is one like this except for writing a, an entire function. I tell you to write a for loop that does something. When we do our next exam in a few weeks after. Uh, after this one, we will be going, because I plan on doing three exams, uh, we will be doing things that are, um, that are more about function calls and for loops. But for turtles, this is very, but turtles are very good about like kind of just helping us figure out where we're standing at. All right, so let me go forward and go through this practice exam because I'm sure you all want your answers. All right. So first, true or false? Computer science is the study of computers. False. False. Right, what is computer science? Study of algorithms, which I heard from somebody, uh, was, uh, was, that is the not wrong answer, so to speak. You ask three, two computer scientists, you'll get three answers as to what computer science is. But everybody's gonna say, if you tell them, computer science is the study of algorithms, they'll go, well, that's not wrong, you know. Um, Alan Turing is often considered to be the first programmer. False. 
What was Alan Turing known for? Yes. Uh, cracking German codes from World War II. I'll also accept creating the first mathematical, creating the uh, one of the two formal mathematical models uh, that dictate what a computer can and can't do. I'll also, I'll, which is known as a Turing machine. I'll also accept Tur uh, Turing is known for create also known for creating the Turing test, which is a test given to, uh, which is a, te a hypothetical test for uh, about, about AIs fooling humans. Yes? There's going to be, they're going to be, com they're going to be very completely different questions, but in, but also very similar. They're, they're, they, they are going to be talking, but they are going to be about that first lecture I went over. Where I go over these are various figures in computing. This is what they're known for, and really, I'm I'm not going to like go completely out out, out of the box here. But um, let's see, who was Ada Lovelace, and why was she an important figure? Yes, yeah, yeah. She's considered to be the first programmer. See, she is she is the she is the falsification of number two. Um, so yeah, she's often con considered to be the first programmer. She worked with Charles Babbage on his computational and on his never built computational engine. Um, you know, and you remember you all, you did a homework on on a famous computer figure uh, computer figure, so it might be good to review that. Okay, expressions like I mentioned, we will have we will have a grand total of um, of five of these. Uh, mathematical expression questions. Yes. 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 Yeah, they should be unveilable on Canvas. So, um, right. So, Canvas. Go to Canvas. And they're in a playlist on YouTube. But I mean, like here. But I mean, I link to that on on Canvas. Um, so well, I'll show you where it is right now. ITP. So you go to intro. So then we go over here to pages and lectures. Click on lectures. It'll look like there's only one video, but I mentioned this is a playlist. And here's all the lectures over here. So um, and I try to keep get them uploaded uh, within a week. Sometimes just sometimes because of the internet connection that doesn't happen. Files are a bit big, so um, but you can also watch it on YouTube on my on my Professor Rosen YouTube channel. Uh, I don't really care about likes and subscriptions because I don't I've completely demonetized the channel, so I don't know. I guess dislike every video you you want. <laughs> All right, so also I would feel kind of weird making money off of requiring you to watch my lectures, so <laughs> that would be a really weird and unethical. All right. So these, the, the big thing over here is to remember is to remember the Python specific operations as well as PEMDAS. Right? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Um, so the big thing. So and it's also to remember that basically PEMDAS is describing tiers of operation, not necessarily order. Right? So you might. So one common mistake is to think this is zero. Because you're like multiplication comes before division, so we do the multiplication, multiplication, and then we divide. But it's left to right. Multiplication and division are on the same tier of operation, right? All multiplication-based operations, multiplication, division, modular arithmetic, are on the same tier, which means we analyze them all left to right. So two, to, two times three is six. Divided by six is one, right? I told you the math would be simple times 100 becomes 600. Might be big numbers, but they're not hard big numbers, right? So your answer should be 600. Yes? I'm getting I'm getting a, one or, no, what's the answer? 1 2 times 6 divide oh, 100, my bad. Right. 2 times <laughs> Yeah, here I am trying to talk and do math at the same time. It doesn't work. Right? Don't just blindly follow my directions, people. Right? The wonderful thing about this is that you can actually check these. Uh, oh, it says that that star 
is not an asterisk, in fact. Why are you doing that? Boom. See? You do that test. No, you, I wish. But you can check your answers to see if they're right over here. Two times, thir two times three is, right? Two times three, six. Divide by six gives us one. One times 100 is 100. Yep. One mod two plus three mod two, right? The modular arithmetic it happens before addition. So what's one mod two? That's one divided by two, which gives us remainder one. Three divided by two, sorry, three divided by two gives us remainder one. So it's just one plus one, which gives us two. Negative one plus negative ten and a half, right? That negative one is becomes a negative one point zero. So it becomes a uh, negative 11 and a half total. Here we have, again, PEMDAS taking effect over here. 3 times 2 is 6. So 4 plus 5 minus 6. So that would be 9 minus 6, which is 3. Now, this one over here is 0 times something that's ugly to add together. But it's 0 times something ugly, which turns it into a beautiful 0. Right, so this entire thing, so no need to do the math over here to figure out what this is because it's all multiplied by zero, it doesn't matter. So it becomes negative 1.0. Right, make sense to everybody there? 2 times 4 minus 20, right? This is not times 4 minus 20, it's 2 times 4, which is 8, minus 20, which is negative 12. All right, again, over here, 7 divide divide 3, which means we do... Which, yep, we means we do 2. It means we do integer division. So this is 2. 2 plus, and then we have another thing over here. 2 plus 6. So this total becomes 8. 4 mod 2 times 3. What's 4 divide, what's the remainder of 4 divide by 2? 0. 0 times whatever is 0. Small number divided by a really big number using divide divide. Zero. This goes into this exactly zero times. All right. Now you have 10 times times 2 times 2, right? What's times times? That's exponentiation. So according to PEMDAS, parentheses, exponentiation, exponentiation occurs before multiplication, division, and other stuff. So this becomes 10, times, um, 10 squared, which is 100, times 2. So 200. All right. Over here. And by the way, I don't suggest doing this all in your head like I'm doing. Because as we saw, that can lead to errors. There's no need for a little calculator. No electronics. If you're really concerned about a mathematical error, you can ask me or one of the TAs. And we'll double check your, that, that there was no math error. Okay, so, but I try to keep it pretty, you know, I try to keep the math fairly simple. I've not yet ever seen a student who made an error due to arithmetic, but, uh, or like, li you know, accidentally missing a one or something. It's gen when there's errors, it's generally because of a PEMDAS mistake or forgetting uh, how a, mo a modulo worked or stuff like that. So, Values x, y, z after the following statements. We've got 7, 8, and negative 5. So then we change x, y, and z. Now remember, the changes basically do kind of flow through because of these are assignment operators. 7 gets assigned to x, 8 gets assigned to y, negative 5 gets assigned to z. So x is equal to x plus 1. That stores 8 in x then y becomes x plus y plus z. x's value isn't 7, it's 8. Plus 8 minus 5. 8, 8 plus 8 minus 5, so that's 16 minus 5, so that's 11. So we've got 8, 11, and then z gets incremented by 1, which is not negative 6, it's negative 4, right? It's negative 4 because we're adding 1 to it, right? Not subtracting one from it. Yes. Um, minus equals, but I don't. But you rarely do that. Okay. Now, 
hopefully after with number six you may have realized that I am a I am a freaking troll when it comes to exams so um, because the answer for all these were true every single answer came down to true which is just simply goes to say if you see multiple repeated answers on the exam or anything don't instinctively think it's wrong um, actually it used to be on the exam that I did uh, I used to do all the answers as true, but that freaked out all the students. Now, the reason I did them all as true was because it made it really easy to grade. And then some years I would just simply not all the operations and then I'd get them all false and that made it quite easy so to grade as well. Anyway, so this one is true or something that's not true. One side of an or statement, if that's true, the whole entire thing is true, so this entire thing becomes true. Not false, not flips the false to true, right? What would not not false be? Not not false is false, right? Multiple nots, right? Multiple nots will, will cancel each other out. Think of it like this. Not not. Or you can think of it in that, in, in basically, you know, six-year-old speech. Oh, it's not not, it's not not bad. So it's bad. Not, 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 right? If you've got an even number of ot nots, then you end up with what you started with. If you've got an odd number of ots, you, you flip it. Um, generally, I'm not going to do something... I, while I may do multiple knots on the exam, they're generally not going to be attached to something like a more complicated statement like this. Okay? So not false. It's true. All right. Not 4 is less than 2 and 3 is less than 10. So 3 and less than 10 is true. 4 is less than 2 is false, but we not the false. So this becomes true and true, so it's all true. This one was interesting. Um, so 32 divided by 8 is, that's, is 4. 32.0 divided by 8 is not 4, but 4.0. And so that actually got, and, the re, and sometimes they do things like this on, on the exam just for the sake of teaching, right? Is 4.0 equal equal to 4, right? And it turns out it is, even though they're different data types. Now, the reason is, is because of the rule we learned about what would happen if we added these suckers. 4.0 plus 4, well, the only way to add them, you can't add a float and an integer, so what happens is that Python automatically converts it to a floating point number. And the same thing happens over here. If, any, if there's ever an operation between an int and a float, we just convert the into a float. So that's what happens there. So that's why they're both the same. Um, all right. So for this one, definitely don't do these this one in your head or something like that because that's painful. Right. Okay. Instead, what we'll want to do is like cancel the is work on is you know use your paper and cancel these out. And I try to provide some space to do that. So we start over here, and parentheses dictate we do stuff in parentheses first. So let's go ahead and knock out stuff in parentheses. True or something else, that's true, right? True or something else is true. So, we put in tr so we'll just cross this out and, and put in true over that. True and not false or true, that becomes true. True and not true, not true becomes False. True and false is false. And false, well, not false is true. Yes? Why is true and false false? Because for an or operation, one side, so for, for an and operation, both sides need to be true for the condition to be true. For an or operation, only one side needs to be true. And is both things have to be true for the entire thing to be true? Yes. Oh, I thought that was a question. Sorry. 
Doing my job for me? <laughs> All right. No, that's good. All right, so we've got an apple a day and a syndig eines mir swangbe, which I did my best to try to uh, try to make something intelligible out of this, but honestly, I've, after 15 minutes in, I realized it was a waste of my time. So, um, and actually, I was getting myself into a tough programming question that would be more suited for students for an interview. So. Um, so anyway, we're, so, this question, so these questions are going to be pretty, you're going to have four questions just like this, I think, on the exam. Um, I can't remember the point value if it's 10 points or 5 points on the exam, but point being is that each, if it doesn't look like it's evenly divisible, well, we evenly divide, uh, divide it because guess what, your exam's more than capable of handling decimal points. Um, and if you happen to see like a 90.01 a 90 on your exam, that 01 is not a mistake. You did something that got you a hundredth of a point because it was amusing. <laughs> All right, so A, so A3, right? Zero, one, two, three. That should give us A. So and what I would suggest, by the way, if you are, you know, what I would suggest, because, you know, paper is your best friend, is I would totally do something like this, if, you've, if, if you can, right? Just to simply label which of these index. I use a monospace font for a reason when you code, so that this kind of stuff can easily be lined up for you, and that's not going to become extra confusing. So here, right, three uh, gives us A. The next question was slicing A from three to eight. Now remember, slicing means going up to, but not including index A, into index eight. So that gets us apple. Okay. Next was um, so you had two easy ones and two na and two nasty ones essentially. Okay. So nasty one, we take it one part at a time, okay? And again, I'm just going to copy over this here, like, okay, B, negative 2. So what's negative 1, right? What, is, what does a negative 1 mean when we, uh, when we use it on a string? Yes, it's the last character. So what does negative 2 mean? Second to last. So what's the second to last character of B? It's B. It's the letter B. So that means we've got B over here, okay? A is um, A3. Well, we've already solved A3, right? That's an A. And now we've got this times 2. So what does the times operator do again when we're dealing with strings? Yeah, it just means we repeat that twice. We re do, do repetition of that string. Right? And remember, a slice of a string gets us a string. Right? So here, the way we read this is from 1 to the end, going by negative 1. So since we're going backwards, the end is the beginning. Right? Since we're going backwards. Negative 1 means to go backwards. Right? That's our step. So right, beginning, end, step. This is where we want to begin, this is where we want to end, and negative one is the step. How we're going to get, what, what do we count by? Negative one means we're counting down. So we go negative one, a way to think of it is until we hit out of bounds, essentially. Okay, so start at index one, which is n, and go up to, and go all the way to the end. So na. So this becomes, so a, 1 through negative 1 is Na, because we're going backwards, right? So what is, and so Na times 2 is Na, Na, so we get banana as our answer, right? Our, my, but in general, I do, try my, I do try to make it so that my, my answers are not gibberish, okay? Um, expect, expect amusing things or 
expect amusing answers and, and video game references on the game, uh, uh, um, on the, um, on the uh, exam. Uh, this should give you an idea of one of the, most two, the two most recent games I played before writing the exam. So there you go. Okay, not here, just the, on, on the actual exam itself. Because why not? All right, and then finally we have B1, copy, copy, two. Now, I'm, I'm never going, so on the actual exam, this is one of those cases where I like to make things on the practice exam a little bit harder or quite more annoying than on the, on the exam, on the practice exam, than on the real exam, right? Because then you're never going to get something, a string this long on the actual exam. Um, right? The, the actual exam, I think we, we're working with much, like one of the strings is three letters, I think one is nine letters, and they're, they're, there's more strings, but they're short. Okay? So um, that was, oh, right, I can do it from memory. B, one, two, 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 right? That was this guy over here. So that means start from index one, go all the way to the end by twos. So index one is H, so then we skip every other letter. So S, we skip. So let's just simply delete the ones we don't want. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Yep. So if you look, so every other one, so the gibberish was hidden, uh, had hidden message in every other character in it. Which I, can, I was debating whether to do that on the exam or the practice exam, and I'm like, yeah, it's too long for the practice exam. I'm oh, sorry, for the actual exam, so whatever. <laughs> okay, next, complete the function. The function takes, in the, the, uh, takes string in the argument text and prints the string in reverse. Number of ways to do this one. A lot of ways to do this one, in fact. Okay. Um, I'll just simply go in here and into our into our Pope program because it gives me syntax highlighting, and I want syntax highlighting. Boom. Okay. Print reverse. Right. Couple ways to do it. First, boom. How do you print? We can just use slice notation to print it in reverse. Text. That's one way to do it, right? This creates a slice of the string that's the same but in reverse, right? Another way to do it is to use an accumulator pattern, which we haven't talked about too much. I was hoping that you'd do something like this, by the way. Um, another way to do it is that you can use an accumulator pattern. For i in range, for index, in range, length of text and go through the individual indices of the text, right? Was one way to do that. Um, so output is equal to empty string. Let's actually go through like something that's a bit easier to understand first. So there's going to be two more. I'm going to do this two more ways. So for letter in text, right? And if you want the output to be exactly the same as your text, as opposed to reversed, you say output is equal to output plus text. This is what we call the standard accumulator pattern, right? Where basically we, oh sorry, not text, but letter. Where basically we take each letter from the text and append it to the answer, right? But this adds it to the end of the answer. If you want to reverse it, it's actually quite simple. Add it to the beginning of your output. So if you've got hello, you'll add O to the beginning, then you'll add L to the beginning, right here. If you've got hello, you'll go through and output will be nothing, then it'll be O, then it'll be L-O, then it'll be L-L-O, then it'll be E-L-L-O. Actually, it would be, sorry, my bad, doing that wrong. It would be H, then it'd be E, then it'd be L, then it'd be L, then it'd be O, because we'd be adding it to the beginning. It's getting my dad myself there. The other way to do this is for output to be like this, where we go, where we control the for loop and we say, hey, I'd like to start at the last index, which is the length of the text minus one, 
go up to but not include negative 1, index negative 1. And then we're going to go down by 1s. It's a lot of negative 1s. But that iterates through the string in, uh, in this uh, letter is equal to text index. I realized after writing this that this was more than I had actually taught or more than I was comfortable with you guys in that most of it I was. So excellent learning thing, but it's not going to be on the exam. Okay. All right. Next question. All right. Draw the result of the turtle program below, which um, I realize actually makes me have to draw something, which is terrible, um, which I don't want to do. Um, but essentially, what does this, well, but I don't need to because guess what? I've got code and I can run it. So um, no, not dot .pyu. Pew. I want it as a dot .py file. There we go. So for this one, right? So it was actually, uh, I was actually quite impressed with me coming up with this. Wish I had saved it for the exam because it's much because I think it's more difficult than what was actually than what actually ended up being on the exam. Because it's a really good one. Here, what we do is that uh, we get a um, we get a little zigzag pattern that's kind of being drawn crosshatch. So let's do a bob dot shape. Size is equal to. Let's go ahead and increase the shape size to, tw um, well, to three. And Bob dot pen size is three as well. And let's see how that changes things. And then, okay, because I'm doing it out of this, I have to do turtle dot done over here. Only because I'm out outside of this, you never need to include a turtle dot done in your program. Um, unless you're working in a different IDE. Okay. So notice that it created a little sawtooth pattern over there, right? If I do, um, if I do, now, what, now I've got length over here. So what it's doing over here, if we look at it, is that, right, Bob is facing this way. Then we tell him to turn right 45 degrees. So that means go down. And tell him to go forward 10, and then to turn left 90 degrees. So he was doing four, so 45 this way. All right, the math I try not to be too uh, too bad. It's a he's just doing a right turn. So in other words, 45 plus 45. He's now going. He's now angled the other way. And now he goes up nine. And now he goes up another 10, which is back to where he, he was, the level he was. And then we just have him point straight again. Okay, so he goes down, goes a bit, goes back up, and then he points straight again. Okay, so then he'd go down some more, and then up, and then down. So it's not particularly. And then this 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 down up produces one try one like tooth, so to speak, right? And so if I do. If I do 12 of these, then I'm going to get like 12 teeth, so to speak. Right? One, two, three, four, five. So it's hard to count like this, but it's you've got 12 teeth. If only there were some way to make it bigger. Oh, wait. That's what the next question was about. So here, suppose I add in a size argument over here, right? The change was this. So the next question was, what was the change and how did it change it? What power did it give me? And if I changed it, it was this. I changed, I added a third argument called size, and then rather than moving forward 10, I told you to move forward size. And so, right, what we had was is that they were moving forward 10, which wasn't much at all. 
But if I now increase this to, say, 100, look what happens. Boop, 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 boop. Now, this, now the teeth are bigger, right? So now the size of the zigzag he's doing is much, much bigger. So the answer for this is that now we can control the size of the zigzags or the size of the pattern. We could already control how many, how long it was, how many teeth he would do. But now we can control basically how big the teeth are. Okay. Next one. All right, draw the result of the program below. You can use a dot to represent a stamp. Uh, so I did this, and so a bit of history on this one. Before I do this, let me show you what uh, the corresponding the corresponding problem on last year's exam. So actually, first off, this is the answer for this one, for this current question. This is that answer. Okay. The corresponding question on last year's exam was, was, given this and some code, fill in the blanks in the code so it does this. And all that code was was basically this code that we had here, turned, but with a turn 45 degrees over here and changing this to a 6. You know, that's all that was. So, um, but let's go ahead and go through this rather than just telling you what the answer is, right? Here, we've got our turtle. We've got bob.turtle is our turtle. And then we've got bob.penup, right? And penup means that he's not going to be drawing anything with his pen. And notice that I said that we can draw a dot to represent a stamp. Let's just scan through our code. I don't see a pen down, so that means that we're just entirely dealing with stamps here, right? Only stamps, so that just means that all we have to worry is about doing belly flops. Now, the terminology I use on the exam when you say drawing is that your drawings don't have to be precise. You don't have to make sure that, it, that if you're drawing something that it has to be exactly at a 90 degree angle and I'm going to dock you if you don't use a protractor or something. It doesn't have to be precise. It just has to be accurate, right? Right, if I want you to do a pattern with that that looks like a you know a tri triangle, then it should roughly look like a triangle, right? It shouldn't be a square. If you have trouble, even if you have trouble drawing, for some reason, just let me know. Or you can even describe it using words, just to just to. So, this goes back to one of the things that um. Uh, to to this. You are allowed to clarify any answer you give, and you are allowed to ask for clarification. Um, another way of saying this is that I have a, one of my best friends. She has a saying, uh, all questions are essay questions. Every question is an essay question. It's just, it's just whether or not they, there's a short answer to it. In other words, you are always allowed to basically write, about, uh, write on your exam and clarify your answer to make sure we get the idea. Right? There have been students who have argued themselves from a wrong answer into a right answer by saying, well, yes, it looks like it's wrong, but this. Or it got an extra credit for asking a really good question. Like, I'm assuming it works this way. I'm not sure if it does, but here's the answer. The more information you give us, the better we're able to, you know, use that information. All right. So. We've got a four row in range five. I used the word row here, which probably means we're going to be dealing with rows of stuff. I'm not going to be using a blob or norg or, um, or, or I or J if I don't have to. Instead, I'm going to use descriptive names, right? So this for loop is all about rows. It's not about columns. I'm not going to trick you by saying, hey, this for loop is about columns when it's really about rows because that would be cruel. It would be unusual. And it'd be bad programming, right? Good programming means that I give you descriptive names. So, four, range, four row range five. So this is going to be dealing with rows, and there's going to be five of them. Four dot in range row plus one. So this is going to be five, this, is going to, this entire thing's going to be repeated four times. Now we've got another for loop here. This has to do with dots, I guess. Well, it's got a stamp in it. That makes sense, I guess. 
So four dot in range, row plus one. So whatever row we're, current row we're at, and rows are zero through four, right? We're gonna add one to it, and we're gonna do that this many times. So on row one, we're gonna do this, sorry, on row zero, we're gonna do this one time. Eh, might as well just call it row, since there's a row plus one over here, might as well just call this row one. On row one, we're gonna do this one time. On row two, we're gonna do this two times. On row three, we're gonna do this loop four, uh, three times. On row four, I'm gonna do this four times. Make sense so far, right? So, and what is that, th this I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take my little turtle, turtle, turtle belly and belly flop on the paper, okay? And then I'm gonna move forward 50 squares. Again, 50 square, and notice that basically all the operations take place in 50 square increments, so so long as it's reasonably spaced, right, that's 50 squares or 50, you know, steps. So, Bob, so I, so I stamp myself as many times as they are, uh, as the row I'm on. And then, so on the first row, I stamp once and, and move forward once. Second row, I'll stamp once and move forward twice. Stamp, move forward, stamp, move forward. Third row, stamp, move forward, stamp, move forward, stamp, move forward, right? And what does this code now do, now once I'm done with my stamping? It says, well, I'm facing this way, so I'm gonna turn this way and go down 50. Then I'm gonna go and turn another right, right? 90 degrees, so I was facing this way, turned right, turned right, so total 180. And then I'm gonna move forward 50 times row plus one. 50 times row plus one, well, I move forward 50 row plus one number of times. This has me rowing 50, moving 50 row plus one, but in the other direction. So this brings me back to where I started. Make sense, right? I was facing this way, now I'm facing this way. When I was facing this way, I moved forward 50 row plus one times. And, and this is all me just trying to reason this out without actually putting anything, any paper or pencil down, right? At the moment. So, and then I do a one, another right 180. So I'm facing this way and now I can't twist my hand anymore without breaking it, so I'm not gonna, but I know, I know, I, I, coward's way out, but this coward's gonna have a well-working wrist, um, right? So, I was facing this way, turn 90, turn 90, and now I'm face, doing another 180, so I'm facing the same way as when I started. So this entire thing is to basically move me down one line, that's what this does, this moves me down one line and brings me back to the original uh, x is equal to zero location. So. Let's, I'm gonna go ahead and just draw that out using ASCII, and I'll use a space to represent, or a space and a line to represent 50, right? Yeah, it just has some, sometimes it just has trouble doing that, but here we go, boom, boom. Okay, so what does this do? This says, right? The turtle is going, um, let's see, I'm just trying to think. So turtle is currently facing that way, right? Four, we're on row one, so row plus one. Well, we're on row zero, so row plus one, it's one. We put down one stamp and move forward 50 squares so our turtle's here now. Now it says for our turtle to turn right 90 degrees, right? So he's facing down, right? It's actually convenient if you notice on your keyboard that you have less than, greater than, but also a V and a carrot. Yes? Um, so why would the turtle go stamp, move forward, you go stamp, move forward? Because currently we're on row zero and it's zero plus one, which means this loop only runs one time. Right? So this runs one time because it's our first time to, through it. So now we turn right, go forward, we go forward, um, we go forward 90, uh, sorry, 50 steps, then we return, then we turn right 90, and then we go forward 50 steps which is row plus one. Row is currently zero, row plus one is one, so we go forward 50 steps. And we're here now. 
and then we turn right 180, which means turn 90 degrees up this way, and then 90 degrees this way, and we're ready to start again. Okay, I'm doing the best we can, I can without actually using paper. Okay, row plus one is equal to, so now row is two, now row is one, so now row plus one is two. So we're on the second line, right? We're on line two. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna go stamp, move forward 50, stamp, move forward 50, right? That's what this does. Then I turn right 90 degrees. I go forward, I go down a line, forward 50. Then I turn right 90 degrees, and I go forward 50, forward 50. So I'll end up over back where I started. Okay? And now I turn right 180 degrees. Now I'm now we're on our third we're on our third iteration through. So we did zero, one, now row is equal to two, which means row plus one is three. We're on our third row. So we move forward, stamp, move forward, stamp, move forward, and then stamp. Move forward. Stamp, move forward, stamp, move forward, and now we turn to the right 90. And we do this whole thing again where we turn down, go down to the next line, turn around, and go back to where we started. And so our output on the fourth line looks like this, and on the fifth line it looks like this. For complicated things like this, I have definitely take the, um, here, is the, here is the code, here's the output, please fill in the blanks accordingly. Okay. All right, so this one should be fairly, this one is fairly well known, hopefully at this point. Complete the function so that the turtle passed in as an argument draws a square. Each side of the square should be side long. Hopefully by this point you did something that looks a lot like this. And if you didn't use a for loop, that's fine. But, you know, would have been easy using a for loop. Here's what you need, what that one looks like. Right, very simple. For I in range four, do the following four times. Bob dot forward side amount, Bob dot right turn 90 degrees, boom. Right? And the reason I have you do that, because a lot of stuff I want to deal with deals with drawing squares, right? So I like this one. A um, bit of story, by the way. When I was doing this, so when I was trying to draw this, I accidentally left out a, lo a couple lines, which ended up doing this. And I'm like, ooh, that's pretty. So I'm going to include that on the practice exam as well. So that's what happened there. Use the draw square function. Write a turtle program that will draw the shape below. You can create more functions if you wish. OK. So. All right, so let me go ahead and go back over here. Turtle dot done. Okay, nice. Okay. So that is show squares. Now, um, Bob takes in an argument there. Um, I, you can create more functions if you wish. You didn't have to use functions if you didn't want to. Yes? Um, on the test, if we forgot to write input turtle, what would we Whatever. Uh, you can assume that turtles already is always imported. Okay. It's fine. It's, it's because, it, because that's, in the grand scheme of things, that is not important. If, you, if your program fails to run because you forgot to import turtle, it's, it's, a super simple, it's a super obvious error. Basically, you run it, it goes, you forgot to import turtle. Everybody makes that mistake. I'm not going to penalize for that. 
if a professor penalizes for that, they're going to take off about one point on, on, and it will just simply be because, and they'll be more explicit about things you need to import. Like, but whatever. Generally, on, on exams I've seen, a lot of times professors will just simply include the import function so that they are very, so you're very specific about what library you're supposed to be using here. Um, so now I, I told you specifically, I include, I didn't hide the turtle here because I wanted you to see where the turtle ended up. And furthermore, I specified that the turtle drew four squares. So in other words, we call the uh, draw square function four times because I don't want you to think, wait a second, is this a tiny, how many, is it four squares or is it like this is square and this is square and this is square? No, none of that Facebook, how many squares do you see in this image kind of thing. This, there, are, there are four squares. There are four lights. Okay, so not that many Star Trek fans. Okay, got it. All right, so by the way, since there's four squares, I kind of can already kind of assume that my for loop is going to look something like this. Uh, for uh, square in range, uh, we're going to do this four times, and then we're going to call draw square using Bob, right, to draw four squares. Um, and we need some size, whatever. I'll say it's 100 or say it's 50. It doesn't really matter. Well, actually, it does matter, but... It matters, uh, it's fairly easy to matter. In fact, I'm just going to use a variable over here, size. So the size of the square is going to be equal to 100. Size. And then I'm just going to call squares bub. Right? And that just makes them dance around four times because, of course, it's not really going to do anything here. Um, and the fact that it's a turtle and I've got an arrow, that doesn't really matter. You don't have to remember to change its shape or anything. It's just for artistic purposes. Right? I care about your pro what I care about is your problem solving process. Okay? So if we're drawing four squares, we've got one here, one here, one here, and one here. That means that. And the way we pro at least the way that I've currently programmed the square, which is different than the way you may have programmed how to draw your square, but the way I programmed to draw my square is I go across, down, around, and up, right? So I start back where I started at, and I end up facing the same direction that I started going, right? So I end up, so when I draw a square, I end up exactly where I started. So. I, so I, in other words, I start drawing a square from the upper left corner, which means where, so let's identify where I have to draw that square function. I have to draw a square here. I draw a square here because that's the top left corner. Hard to make out over here, but believe it or not, this is a top left corner. Just happens to be the bottom right corner over here, right? So corner, 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 and then another corner, right? Let's see, one, two, three... Although, you ended up over here. I'm not really sure how you ended up over there. Let's see. How did I draw the my, my function? One, two, three, and then... Ah, right. Now I understand how I did that, how that guy ended up over there. Right? Because it's a for loop. So whatever I do to adjust is going to be there. So I'll start by drawing my first square. And then the next, then what I have to do is I have to get into the space to draw the next square. Right? So I drew my square here. So my next thing I want to do is simply go over here to draw my next square. So where is here? Well, it's right at the middle of the square. Right? Well, how do I get to the middle of a square? I have, yes? Yeah, the side divide by two, right? I got to go, I got to go across half the distance I went and down half the distance I went. Make sense? That's why I said it really doesn't matter what your size is because whatever it is, what what really matters is your size and then half the size. So Bob dot, um, so Bob and I don't have to bother. Let's see, and I suppose. 
what I did here is that I do need to, if I don't want to, well, I'll, I'll forget to do pen up first because you'll want to draw, bring your pen up, but let's see what happens when I don't do it. So Bob dot um, right 90. So he's going to go down. So this will move him down. Bob dot right 90. Bob dot uh, forward size divide by 2. Here it doesn't really matter if you're using, uh, oh, that's FD for forward, right? It doesn't matter what you're, if, you're, if you're doing mod, uh, integer division or, you know, other division here. I like to do integer division just out of practice because I want an integer. Okay, so we've gone down, and now we have to go face the original way. Bob.left90, also appropriate to do Bob.right270 if you want him to spin around more. Right? That's purely an aesthetic choice there. Size, divide by 2. Okay. So now, basically we're saying, Bob, hey, draw a square where you are, and then what I want you to do is I want you to turn down and go halfway down the circle and then go halfway across the circle. Make sense? So this goes halfway down the circle. This way it goes halfway across the circle. Let's square. So there. Now I've got an extra line over here and that was because when I'm moving Bob, what I really should do is Bob.pen up, right? When I'm moving him to the next position and then Bob.pen down when I'm ready for him to draw again, right? So here, right now, move to your next position and then start drawing. And why does he end up over here? Because he's over here because he's ready to draw another square. Not a circle. <laughs> I swear I passed geometry. <laughs> Was a challenge. <laughs> All right, this over here, um, actually, so like I mentioned, I got this... Um, I think what happened is I left out this bit over here in my code. So um, oh, that's interesting. I wish I had done that. Right? For this one, I'm not really I'm not really sure I remember what I did for that one, but I left out some code. But what I did oh right, over here what we did, boom, 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 boom. Right? And then, what did we do over here? I had him go down, down and across. Oh, I remember what I did here. Um, so, and then I think I had, so this, so what happened was with this guy over here, it's very interesting. Um, oh, I closed the exam. That was, that was a, So go over here, and then what I did is I went down, across, and then I didn't rotate the turtle correctly, right? Over here, I, I wrote it in such a way that it's okay for the turtle to go. Uh, I think what I did over here, let's see what happens if I leave out this left over here. Right? It's not precisely what I did, but um, I think over here was what I needed, right? I drew square, and what it ends up being is that I rotated. Yeah, there we go. And what I did is I basically what happens with this one is that basically I left. I have is that. It's kind of exactly the same as the previous code, but he, but the idea here is that by giving the turtle an additional spin of 90 degrees, he draws, so he gets back to, to this point where normally he would go be, go be going boom, 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 and draw another square over there. But over here, I tell him to turn right before drawing a square, so he draws a square like this. And then I have him turn, uh, then I have him go over here and turn right again. So that's what happened over there. 
All right, 20 more minutes. Excuse me. Yes. Are we not allowed to use GoTo on the exam? Oh, you're totally allowed to go use GoTo. So, like, is that in like fact, in, we can yeah. In fact, in fact, in one of the exam, in one of the exam questions I I use um, for for in thank so because I told you, I'm sorry because you asked. One of the lines in the exam is literally going to uh, that I use in part of the fill in the blank code, not part that you have to fill in. I think is like go to, and then I say zero. I like say Bob dot go to. And I think it's like zero, and then I tell you to do row, and then it's like minus row plus one. Well, minus row plus one times 50. Well, let's see. Something like this is what I had. But you're allowed to use go to on the exam. This is possibly the only class you'll ever be able to use go to in because go to is considered harmful. If you don't. Um, there used to be a command in programming language. I'll get to you in a second. There used to be a pro, pro command in programming languages called go to, which took the place which you could use instead of while loops and for loops. And what it did would simply say, yeah, so what I want you to do is go to this line in my code and start executing from there. Now, this led to a lot of questions of like, wait, what happens to all the variables uh, if I'm going inside a function or something? And so it got very confusing. So. It's now banned in most, in fact, in some languages, you aren't even allowed to name variables go to because of its hatred. Yes? Um, I just, um, why did you use loser in the, uh, because I wanted to. Because I wanted, because I wanted an integer no matter what I put in, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. So what is the output of this following program? Foo bar baz. Now, foo bar and baz are the classic medicine tactic variables uh, in the United States. That that's a that's a that that's a word, right? Medicine tactic. <laughs> yeah. So, um, medicine tactic variables is is something that stands in for another place of text. Placeholder is computer science and computer programming. Uh, foo and bar are good examples, pretty much used in there. They come from the military terminology of foo bar, which means, well, it's a bit harsher, but it means something a bit harsher than fouled up beyond all recognition or fouled up beyond all repair or some, you know. Things have gone wrong. Very, very classic in programming. Um, so common medicine tactic variables include foo bar, foo bar baz, quux, quux, quas, Forge, Grolf, Garbly, Waldo, Fred, Pla, Zizzy, uh, Zizzy, and Thud. Uh, if you're in the Commonwealth, you'll see Wibby, Wobble, Wobble, and Flop. Um, so um, Python's different because they like uh, the comedy. It's from the spam comedy set uh, sketch, uh, which is it's kind of amazing. You haven't seen it. It's a famous comedy sketch. Watch it if you haven't. But we use spam and eggs often in Python. But I wrote this originally for a Java class, so that's why we have foo bar and baz over here. So the function foo all it does when called is print foo. The function bar calls foo, prints bar, then calls it uh, then prints baz. Baz prints baz and calls foo. Okay, so first we call foo. So, they, so we're asking what the output is. So the first step, we call foo. So our output for that is foo. The next is bar. So first thing bar does is call foo, which prints out foo. So our answer so far is foo foo. Okay, then we print bar. So our answer is foo foo bar. Okay, and then we print and then we call baz. So we got foo foo bar baz, which calls foo. So it's foo foo bar baz foo. And now I'm going to stop before it gets, actually, it's not too much more. Foo, foo, bar, baz, foo. No. And then finally we call, so we're done with bar, so now we call baz. So we get foo, so now, and that will print out baz, which will be followed by foo. So it's foo, foo, bar, baz, foo, baz, foo should be your answer. <coughs> <coughs> 
think I've, I think my IQ points have dropped from saying that. So, okay, okay, boom, boom. Right. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and see the official. The wonderful thing about about Python is that you can like ask the Python for an official answer. Foo foo barbaz foo baz foo. So yeah, I'm actually impressed. I've never done that out without writing it down before. But you have functions calling. You have you. But it's fairly simple. You can have a function calling another function. Now the next question we had was, what if we changed the, what if we changed ba uh, bar, sorry baz in such a way that we were. What if we added a line to baz and that line was, bar. What happens to the code? And the answer to this is that, well, bar calls Boz and, ba and Boz calls bar, which calls Boz, which calls bar, which calls Boz, which calls bar. So, and you get a error because we've created an infinite loop. It tells me ex maximum, the specific error is maximum recursion depth exceeded. In other programming languages, it'd be what's called a stack overflow error because we overflowed the, the, the function call stack. So in other words, this causes an error or an infinite loop. That's the answer I'm looking for. Because the fact that it stops is only, the, the, the reason it stops, it only stops is because I've only got a, phys, a limited physical amount of memory. If I had literally unlimited memory, it would literally never stop. Yes? Can you explain why that's an infinite loop? Sorry? Can why that? Why that's an loop? So it's an infinite loop because there's no, there's no point at which it stops. What you have is you've got bar, and bar will call boz. Boz on, the, on itself does its own thing and then it calls bar. And so bar restops from the tart, uh, start. It's a new call to bar. Right? So we start from the beginning again, which calls boz, which calls bar, which calls boz, which calls bar. Right? Does that make sense? They're just simply say they're basically just saying it's your turn, your turn, your turn, and the answer is just pi and and basically when you're done with a function, you have to go back to where you called it from. And so that so those directions that stack of directions that of how to get back from our function calls gets completely filled up, and that's why it crashes. If we had no physically physical memory lo uh, limitations, we um, wouldn't get any errors. So let's see, ten minutes left, perfect amount of time to do this. All right, possibly the most painful question in the exam is this one, the confundus question. Um, And I do mean painful because it's meant, this is one of those things that's meant to teach you something. And the lesson it's meant to teach you is that you don't really understand it as well as you thought you did. I'm here to dispel a lot of illusions. A lot of them. Because you probably did not get the right answer when you did this. Which is okay. So X, Y, and Z are... So, for, so because this is meant to teach you a, for, a couple of lessons here, these pair of questions. The first is that these variables are different than these variables. This x, y, z are different than these x, y, z's over here. When we, when, we take x, when we take numbers and pump them into a function, we copy the values over. Okay? Different numbers. Different copies of numbers. Right? For instance, my age, if you've got somebody the different, uh, with a different age as you, right? That's your age versus their age. Those are two different numbers, even if they happen to be the same number. So the next thing is that when we pass arguments into, into functions, they're positional. That's how we get the values. So here we've got x, y, z. x is 6, y is 8. So x is 6, y is 8, and z is 4, which means that this first value is 4 over here, the second value is 6, and the third value is 8. Right? Because I said x, y, I put x, y, z over here, but I put z, x, y over here. Right? The next thing, remember, is that they're positional. 
So when I pass them into Confundus, and if you don't believe me, print out yxz right over here, because that yxz is going to be 4, 6, 8. Why is it that way? Even though, wait, but z is over here and z is over here, so why doesn't it get 4? Because the names don't matter. The names don't, the na these are different x, y, z's. Okay, right? This may be confusing you. Why does this e go over here? Why, why is this, why is this 4? over here, but z over here is h. Well, you wouldn't be asking this question if it was this, right? You wouldn't be asking that question if it was this. Yes? Is it like a coordinate plane? Yeah. Well, coordinate plane? Like, is it like trying to match something out? No, it doesn't try to match anything. It's just positional, right? In the sense that the first argument goes into the first position. The second argument goes into the second position. The third argument goes into the third position. 4 came first, so, it, so, so the y is 4. And 6 came next, so x is 6. And then 8 came next, so it is z. Next thing we do is that we increment x by 1. We say y is equal to y minus x plus z. So y, 4, minus x plus z. What is x plus z? Um, so x plus z is 15, so we're looking at 4 minus 15. Is it 4 minus? No, no, no. No, that's not the way you do it. It's order of operations, left to right. y minus x, that's negative 3, plus 8, 5. So, sorry, 7. So now y becomes 5. So now we print out z, y, x, c, x, y, 8, 7, 5. Painful, yes? All right. But remember, really it's not that hard. Just remember the name. Over here is re really where the confusion happens when we pass stuff in. First off, you just got to make sure they match the names over here because those are in the names are in the same scope. But over here, the functions are different. So when we pass it into the function, that's different. I further hammer this home with the next question, which I'm very proud of. Because honestly, I just make you do a bunch of work for nothing over here. Right? Because I can tell you the answer right now is 1782. Now, why is that? Well, it's got 17, we've got 8, we've got 2. I didn't switch up the coordinates this time around, or I didn't switch up the uh, which variable goes which x is first, then y, then z. So we have 17, 8, 2, which means we pass 17, 8, 2 over here, right? And then we do this uh, addition operation. We square something, and then we do some nasty modular arithmetic, right? Hint on my exam was what? If there's math, it's not going to be hard math. Uh, what? Which number am I squaring? The middle number? 8, 8 squared? My, you should, I mean, I know that's... That's 64 off the top of my head, but you might not. And then, I don't know, x is going to be x is 2 plus y, which is 10. So we've got a mod 10 here. I mean, so, yeah, the math is there. But anyway, the print statement isn't there. It's here. The print statement's over here. And... All, the, all, this, all these operations, they only change these copies of the variables. They don't change these variables over here. They don't change these variables over here. They just change their copies, which is why when we do these operations, these are the only things that change. Uh, these are the only things that, uh, sorry, these things change, but not these. So you've got 17, 8, 2 as your answer because nothing changes. Write a new function called print three limits that prints all integers less than limit that are divisible by three. If limit is less than or equal to zero, print nothing. That's fairly straightforward. I'm just going to quickly do this one because of the lack of time. For, uh, for num in range limit, go up to but not in, so it was 
all the numbers below all the positive integers, so everything uh, above 0. So I guess we should go from 1 to limit, technically. So from 1 up to, but not including limit, less than limit, that are divisible by 3. Um, so there we go. If num mod 3 equal equal 0, print num. That's all you need. If num is less than 0, you don't print anything. And that's just taken care of by the, sorry, if num is 0 or less, you don't print anything. And that's just taken care of by the loop. There you go. So those are your exams. I'll upload this today so that you guys will have a chance to review. There's your answers for the exam, or practice exam, rather.